Good morning, everyone. Brooke Shields, beautiful Brooke Shields, is, of course, with us. Um, excellent documentary called Pretty Baby is something I recommend you watch. I have seen it. I, on a personal level, I know Brooke, and um, the two-part documentary really uh, documents her life. It was even shocking for me to watch some of the details. It's quite a life. Brooke, good morning. How good are you? Good morning. Thank you for good having morning. me. It's the first time I've been on your show. It's wonderful. Yes, we're very Hi, happy Robin. to have you here. <laughs> Where's yeah, Fred? Brooke. Is Fred somewhere? Fred is hiding. You. Hiding. He's, a, he's, he's nervous around you. He's, he's scared, scared of, of you. Me. I'm very threatening. Yeah, women scare him <laughs> in general. But, uh, you know, Brooke, I was watching an old interview you did with David Letterman. This was, mm. you know, when you were at Princeton, you were, you were still a college student and you were on Letterman's show. And you said something like, yeah, um, I'm given an allowance. I was always given an allowance of $10 because all my money was in a trust. So when I got older, I would get my money. And you said in college you were getting an allowance of like $12 a week or something like that. And I was thinking to myself, gee, that doesn't jive with the documentary where you say you've been bankrupted. I mean, your mom didn't – all the money you made because the Calvin Klein ad, the Brooke Shields dolls, you – I mean, the merchandising around the name Brooke Shields and your fame. There was no one more famous. (laughs) She saved nothing, right? Your nothing. Mom? No, what nothing. she did was buy real estate. So at a oh. certain point, we had, I mean, seven properties. Montana, oh. Sun Valley, Adirondacks, New York, New Jersey, L.A. We, I mean, we just, every time we'd go to a place, she'd say, wouldn't it be great to have Thanksgiving here? <laughs> and she'd buy a house. And because there are, but there are laws, right, Brooke? Like, in other words... A mom can't just invade her daughter's money, you know, so even if she wants to buy property, she's got to run it by you and you've got to approve it. And I just said yes to everything that she, you know, presented to me. And the thing is, we were just buying ourselves a life. You know, right. we were buying travel and ho- homes and then experiences because we had money, you know, but we didn't always have money. And it was I worked and we got stuff. You know, we got a car. We, you know, it was, it was so sort of transactional and it was like it was all put into this pot. And it really wasn't like the Jackie Coogan law didn't really apply to me because I was from New York. I wasn't a, an, an L.A. hire. And then right. she would have to specifically get me legally defined as an L.A. hire so that I, w- I would be more protected. The Jackie Coogan law was a a law enacted and named after Jackie Coogan, who was a child actor, and his parents cleaned him out. He never he was one. He was a huge star as a kid. Yep. And and so it didn't apply to you. And so when do you realize? Oh shit! There's no money. I mean, I've worked my entire youth, and I and I I thought I had millions and millions of dollars. When does it When does it dawn on you, Mom has gone through all the money? It is sort of right before I met my ex-husband was when I started really, and I wasn't working. So as long as I was working, I kept thinking money was coming in, which it was, it just was getting dissipated. But I I like, you know, in my later years, right before I I got married, I was looking around. I had no capital. I just had, and I had no work. And it was before Suddenly Susan. It was before Broadway. And I was doing sort of shitty commercials in like Japan for, you know, for whatever. And I thought, God, I have to start selling properties. And then he kind of helped me sell one to pay off another to pay off another. And that kill you. I always feel bad for anyone who has the responsibility early in life to support a mother and, and has the, you know, no kid should have that pressure on them to have to support their family. If, I never knew anything different. So, you know, my first paycheck was when I was 11 months old. So, um, so I didn't know any, that was the way, that was the way my life was set up. So I didn't have resentment. Um, and I didn't want for anything. I mean, you know, travel and homes and jewelry, you know, my mom, the thing that, that, that I resented and had a problem with is that I found myself at a certain age and Money-wise, I was always going to find a way to make money. Like, I was going to figure it out. We'd you know, liquidate and then start over. I didn't have that resentment. I had a resentment about my career because she didn't set it up with any um, uh, real value from a talent standpoint. So I found myself in this position feeling kind of like a joke. 
Yeah, it's awful when your mother manages you, and I know you struggle with this, but I, I mean, we've talked about had, this. We've talked. Yeah, about we've talked mothers. about it a lot. Oh, yeah. it drives me, it drives me crazy. Your mom is the the one person in the world who's supposed to protect you, and your mom didn't. And you know, but you were the did, hottest though, in commodity a, in a weird way, though, Howard. What she did was, she, on the one hand, no, because she put me forth so sort of blatantly, but. She never didn't love me, and I never questioned her love. Like, I have a stepsister who um, traveled with me everywhere, and she thought her mother let her go because with me because she didn't care about her and she doesn't really love her. And she's grown up with this sort of feeling that deep down her mother doesn't really, really love her. And that's the thing that I'll never n- not be happy about and thankful for. She was broken and and flawed and boy she needed a lot of love and support but i was i was i was loved it, it's weird you know i mean it's it's I a strange it's thing you know i relate to you on this i think the hardest thing to do and i know you've been in therapy a long time and so have i the hardest thing to do is to see your parent as a villain you just can't accept it you can't see them as the bad person in your life it's hard but when you see and, them as broken it it helps with right. the, the it helps with the assessment and right. and you know if she was evil and did it intentionally to scar me then you'd go okay she's a rotten human being but she like le- legitimately thought she was doing the right thing isn't it amazing your mother looked at you and when you were first practically <sighs> born like out of like a, like a fresh on the planet and said star. this kid this kid's a star and and the, not in a delusional way. She looked at your face and went, this is maybe, the, she compared you to a work of art that the world should enjoy. You're like, holy fuck. This woman was able to look at you and assess your monetary worth because of your insane beauty. She, like she knew. She slept with me strapped to her chest because she was so afraid I was going to die. I found out later she had a child who died. Um within the first 48 hours or 24 hours or something. And, you know, that fear of being abandoned yet again was, and there was this sort of visceral, it, it immediately became enmeshed, you know, immediately. And, and you know what, the, but you I know what doesn't jive for me? Here's the what? woman who was so protective of you and wanted you to be alive that she slept with you, on, you know, you're, you're on her chest strapped to her. And, and I, the, the documentary so crazy because it points out at 11, you go to do Pretty Baby, which is infamous. You know, we'll debate forever whether that was like kitty porn or whatever. You're making out with a 40-year-old Keith Carradine in the movie. 28. <laughs> oh, is he 28? Yeah. Okay. And your mom doesn't go to the set that day to supervise and make sure you're okay. It's crazy, isn't it? She it's handed crazy. me over to this tour. You know, it was yeah. it was like, oh, he's he's French. He's European. It's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, it's not Kitty Porter. He's French. It's, yeah. uh, it's an art film. It's Plus crazy. It got, it got in the way with her, her drinking hours. <laughs> exactly. Here's the weird thing for me. When you were in college, this is how crazy it is around you. As, a, as this beautiful woman who, as your mother says, is a piece of artwork, that you go to college. And I know a guy who had a friend that I guess used to write to you in college. Okay. They should have gotten this guy for the documentary. He was so (laughs) obsessed with you that he would send you letters. And then he would get back a form letter that said, basically, um, hi, this is Brooke Shields. Thank you for writing me. I'm not available to date you right now. It was a form letter. You were so in demand from guys. And guys were fantasizing about you and wanting you. This guy had a glove compartment full of letters from you that was the same form letter. I can't date you now. I'm in college. I'm not able to. It, that was a thing, right? My, I mean, my mom had to hire somebody to work in our office to read the fan mail. And she would, like, separate the nuts. You know, the, there was prison. Then there were crazies. Like, you know, they were stalkers. And then there were sweet kids. And then there were the, the guys that wanted to date me. And she... You know, she hired someone to sort of read them all and put them in categories, and then we had to try to respond accordingly. She just was under – she believed that you can't um, ignore them. 
every single one of those people, they're, they're a fan. They're a fan of yours and they're one person. And to you, they are your biggest fan. So you have to honor that, you know, and it was a huge pressure. Did you ever have an inordinate fear of anything happening to your face? Like when you're the most photographed, you're doing Calvin Klein ads, you're in Pretty Baby, you're in Blue Lagoon, you're, your face launches camp ad campaigns. Calvin Klein jeans go up 300% in sales just from you trying them on. Would you, what, what kind of paranoia did you have about your own face? Would you just want to hide? I didn't look at myself in the mirror. I mean, I literally would not look at myself. And Why? Because it felt arrogant, it felt weird. I knew I wasn't going to see myself the way other people saw me. So I would just be disappointed. And I was afraid to think that I wasn't enough or feel that I wasn't good enough. You know, so if I looked at myself, I'd see my fat face or a double chin or I, I would pick myself apart. Um, and, and in a way, I used to try to do really crazy, funny faces to sort of counter, to, to counteract austerity and beauty um because it just it makes you an alien to, to yourself <laughs> in other words you would make funny faces in order to say to the rest of the world i'm like you I, you know i can i'm not i'm not this perfect it, it's such a weird trip you were on well it just you're just so alienated from the rest of of humanity <laughs> you know you're on this like you're in this just sort of on this pedestal and it it always just seemed unmerited it didn't seem merited to me because it didn't wasn't attached to anything I did. You know, it had nothing to do with my brain. It had nothing to do with my talent. And so it was just, you know, it was vapid to me. Were you so powerful around men that, like, like was it creepy when you were a kid and men, they're not looking at you like, oh, what a nice-looking little girl. They're looking at you like, I want to fuck this girl. You know what, you know? though? It, it, I... I was so detached. Wow. I mean, really, really detached. It's like arrested Men development, but just on another level. When did you start realizing guys looked at you in a sexual way? Uh, frighteningly so, almost not until my 20s. Oh, really? 20s, yeah. Because it was, it didn't, it, I... None of it was my real life. And I was a virgin until I was 22. Like, I was so cut off, and it just was easier. I mean, it was slightly psych it was psychosis in a way. You know, right. it was this, it was um, a different personality, you know, and I, I, I separated those personalities. And, it, you know, I'd put on that hat, go do the thing, and then I'd go and do homework. I would do things like homework and be really OCD and just organized and neat. And I had a file of facts and I did all these things that were sort of obsessive compulsive so that I didn't have to be in touch with my sexuality. What was your relationship with, like with other girls your age? Did, did they hate you? Were they like, fuck you? You, you know, like, did, were they jealous of your beauty? And that's something why I would start making funny faces or, you know, because I'd want to be like, I just want them to like me and not hate me for my beauty. They didn't have to hate me because I beat them to the punch. You know, I, right. I threw myself in. I was a cheerleader in high school. I also, I never went to professional children's schools. So it's like, I never lived in Hollywood. I went to regular grade schools, regular high schools. And yeah, the initial day was always hard, but then they'd see Why was it hard? Why was the initial day they hard? Were, they would leave me alone. They'd leave me alone right. so much that I would be left alone and like have to sit with the teachers, which was, you know, did not make me popular. But then I tried out for the cheerleading. I made the cheerleading team. I, I just, I studied, I, I, I was a clown. I made fun of myself. I made myself smaller. I was self-deprecating. I took self-deprecation to like a whole new level. And I, I, I just, I made myself not smaller, but in a way smaller, just to be not a threat and to be, if they couldn't relate to me. I mean, I remember in high school, I, uh, I, my mom said, okay, we can have this party at Wednesdays, which was this club where you could roller skate. And she said, I'm going to invite your whole class. 
And I invited my whole class and they saw how much work I had to do, like the press and interviews and stuff, while they were able to have a good time. And after I gave them that, I was, they didn't, it wasn't like I was providing just entertainment, but they saw what a burden a lot of what I had to do was. And they were, and that sort of just opened it up for me. And I do the same thing in college. Just give them time. Did your mother try to keep kids away from you to get too close because she's afraid that you would be influenced by them or other parents? Did she kind of create a cult-like kind of world? The antithesis. She made them come with me. Like, Scavulo photographed all my friends from high school. Every time I was, you know, the studio or something would send us tickets, they'd say, okay, you have two tickets. She'd say, we need three. She needs a friend with her. She needs her sister with her. She needs, you know, and she would introduce my stepsister as her daughter. And (laughs) they'd be like, oh, I see the resemblance. We could not look further from each other. (laughs) But, you know, she always said, this kid is going to need to have a kid her age next to her so she can, so they can make fun of you guys. See, this is why I feel your mother is so confusing. Oh, yeah. Like, like she... She'd be so protective that way and open to you, you know, meeting people and and, and thinking of your feelings. But then she'd set you up to go take nude photographs in a bathtub with with some guy when you're, what, 10 years old or something? Nine. Nine. (laughs) Nine years old. And by the way, that burned my ass in this documentary. I want people to watch it. You You went and sued the guy who took these pictures and said, please do not release pictures of me nude at nine years old. And when you say nude pictures, you were sexualized. They put the makeup on you, the whole thing. They made you look like an adult. And you said to the court, please do not allow this guy to release these pictures. It's kitty porn, basically. And, and it was, said, he waited till I was famous to do it too, which was just gross. Was but famous. you know, nowadays, the norm is different. You, if you went to court now, they would say, this is kitty porn. There's no way this guy's allowed to release it. I believe that would have happened if it was nowadays. But back then, they were like, fuck you, Brookfields. Yeah, I lost. We're putting out a whole book. Yeah. You naked. I, and I, you didn't get paid a dime. And and the the prosecuting attorney, who was just such a prick, you know, was like making lewd gestures to me. And, and nobody was seeing it. And it was so surreal. And What do you mean, lewd l- l- gestures? Like he would lick his lips and look at me and say things like, you were thinking of fornication, weren't you? And I was like, oh, I thought it was fornification, but no. <laughs> I was like, this, <laughs> I was so naive, but I, no, at nine years old, we were doing a, you know, it was like, it was me, Yasmin Bleeth, Felice Schachter, all little uh, models at the time. And we were doing like, dress up we were a little kid in one picture and then we were a, a, an adult in the other so you know a birthday cake and then champagne naked and i got the bathtub <laughs> i got the bathroom bathtub assignment but i wasn't i walked around nude as a nine-year-old i wasn't i didn't have budding sexuality i didn't have i wasn't but when you're 15 and you're in high school and then to bring those out it was embarrassing and that's the crazy thing with your mom that I can't figure out. There are times, that's why I think when you're in therapy, you're sitting struggling with her. It's like, well, how do I look at this childhood of mine? I have on the one hand a mom who says, I love you so much. I want to make sure other children are hanging out with you and, and that you don't feel like a freak or you're weird. And then, she says, hey, let's go to this shoot. And the guy goes, let me photograph her naked and says, okay. You know, it's like. You know, her, crazy. she has this like crazy justification for things like, you know, she she would she believed that as long as she was in my personal life, keeping me safe and 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 virginal and pure and all that, that she was sparing me. You know, she just she believed her own, you know, the, the, the scene where she's teaching me how to swim. Yeah, she doesn't know how to swim. She died not knowing how to swim. And I I saw that and I was like, holy hell. She's, I believed she could walk on water, let alone, you know, swim. And I'm looking at that thinking, the woman never learned how to swim. But boy, she taught me how to swim. <laughs> and it was right. just, that's the way she lived her life. You know, when she had yeah. dementia later on, she would, she was cooking soup on the 
open burner with a in the ceramic bowl. And my husband said, hey, Terry, you might not want to do it. It's kind of like dangerous. And she was like, ah, fuck the middleman. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was like that. She was in her own world. She Why did a- you say you didn't get to say goodbye to your mother? Were you guys estranged at that point? No, because she, she was um, she was in dementia. So, you know, when it's when dementia starts uh, it, in any form. Alzheimer's is very different than what my mom had. My mom was really alcohol-induced and, and stroke uh, as a result. and But she disappeared qu- quite quickly to me, you know? Oh. And so you, never so you had... didn't have a, a moment where you, where you kind of, where she was coherent and you could say, I, you know, I love you, I miss I, you, or whatever. I love you, and, I, you know, I, 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 I wanted, you know, she started dying, I think, when I, like, left her. You know, when I, she, she would say she divorced me and, you know, she just, she never intended to not be enmeshed with me, you know? And so to look at her and then when you, it's nothing like it's in the movies, like it's, you know, I, I don't know. And I'm sorry, I texted you about your father, but I I don't know if, if you were there, but you knew I wanted to be there because I wasn't able to be there for my father because um, I was pregnant and he died three weeks before Rowan, my first daughter, was born. And so I was not in the room. I, I was not able, I, I missed the whole thing. And my sisters were like, oh, it was beautiful. And they were singing and the wind came in. And I was like, oh, aren't you guys lucky? You know, and then I'm sitting with my mother and she's gasping and her teeth are clamping shut. And, and it was just so horrific to look at. And like, that's the way. She left yeah, the world. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you think you missed a moment with your mother. I remember oh. going into the hospital, the hospice, to see yeah. my father. And he's laying there. And I'm like, everyone says, well, why don't you go say a few words to your father? I'm like, say a few. What am I going to say? So I'm like, hey, Dad, uh, sorry to see you go. It was like, it, was, it wasn't the moment that you think And you don't get it. Be. You don't. No. You don't get it. It's not like in the movies, you know. It's not, I love you too, or I'm sorry, or, and then, <sighs> And then the life leaves them. It's just, there's nothing pretty about it. And I had, I also romanticized so much about everything. Just to, it was like a defense mechanism. So it was a, it was a less than ideal moment, but I'm not sure dying is ever ideal. (laughs) So when you finally got it, like when you finally sort of divorced your mother and asserted your independence, it feels good, I guess. But it also feels bad because you have to, like, really separate from her. And if she doesn't, like, a parent should be proud. Oh, wow, Brooke's on her own. She's feeling good. She feels like she can go off on her own. But I don't know. Your guilt. mom. I mean, you have a lot you know, of. She's guilty. You have guilt. 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 And, and fear and sadness because you know, you know, you know, she could play the martyr and say, you see, everybody leaves me, you know. And right. she was sort of raging and couldn't believe I left her in such a violent way. And. Um, and I, I had tried doing it systematic desensitization, but it wasn't going to work with her. Nothing was ever not extreme with her. And then she said to Lisa, my best friend from high school, she said, Brooke, she's like, Brooke, you're not going to believe it. She said, your mom looked at me and said, but that took balls. <laughs> oh, so she was proud, maybe. She way. was, you know, I, she saw the fighter in me. And although she was angry, I think she was like, all right, she's she's not a wimp, the kid, you know, and I think she she had to give me props because it was really a ballsy thing. I, I gutted the her office. I took everything overnight, um, and you know it was it was a, a very difficult thing for her to witness happening. Did she yell at you? Did she like? Uh, no, she just doing? disappeared. She just went into a bender. How many years did you uh, go without talking to her? No, just a couple of months. I didn't. Couple of months. I, yeah, I've never not. I. She. No, I, I didn't. I. That wasn't the goal. The goal was just to assert myself and separate, so that I could start finding out who I really was on my own. And the irony was, I was then I was getting married, you know, and that was to Andre Agassi. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and that was just another. You know, I. I wanted her at the wedding. I wanted her blessing and all that. So right, I, yeah. You could probably write a whole nother book on just guys who hit <laughs> on you 
Like, I mean, you probably haven't <laughs> told all. You probably haven't told all this. Like, I, I think you're brutally honest in the um, in the uh, documentary and everything. But the amount of men hitting on you, maybe women too, it's an avalanche, right? I mean, guys but you know what? The, at you. the funny thing is, though, it's like when I look back, like the joke is, it was like. Um, John Travolta, Michael Jackson, George Michael. Like, I was, I, you know, those are the ones I supposedly and kind of <laughs> had relationships with because, of, you know, I was so happy that they protected me. What do you think they all had in common? Oh, they I protected mean, uh... my virginity. They respected my virginity, Howard. <laughs> what kind of guy is that? <laughs> Men, though, you know, while you were naive, they, I imagine when it comes out that you were a virgin, everybody is lining up trying to take Brooke Shields' virginity. It's like... Uh, or not, though. Or like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to be that. I don't want to put that to be saddled with that. Like, I mean, there's the other side of it, too, which was like, I became even more on a pedestal. You know, right. I was... I, Does it become a thing? In other words, you're like, well, wait, I just can't give up this sacred virginity because now it's a thing. The world knows... <laughs> you wrote that book where you said, I'm a virgin. Yeah. And everyone knows you're a virgin. And then you're like, well... Gee, I just can't give this up to any guy. No. And then and the, the sad part about that is that when I was in love and really in the like I have two daughters now, I pray to God. I mean, I know what my husband's listening, so I better be careful. But um right. <laughs> but you know, I, I you pray for that for your daughter. Like Absolute right. beautiful love, the Rom, the Rom, the Romeo and Juliet love minus the death, and and you know it's how like, did it? But how did it come out that Dean Cain was the guy that uh, broke that that that, that, that <laughs> broke, broke the news, hymen. but broke your hymen? <laughs> no, broke the news <laughs> about did he did he write that or did you write that? I so, I who spilled the beans. I did because I was so madly right. in love with him, and then. You know, and Wait, it, what were the circumstances that you went public and said, was it years later oh, or was years, it when it, years, years, years later, years so later? Who asked you? And like, how did that come in, about? Incarnation of him, the old incarnation of him. Uh, what do you mean, new incarnation, he, he old did, incarnation? He wasn't as he did Superman. He, yeah, but I mean, you when mean? he was in college, no. he was just college. He's not the far... Right. He's not <laughs> Superman yet. No, right. no, he's, he's not no. In, in support of certain things that, you know... His politics, oh, oh, you mean politics, he's Trumpy? Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Thank was you, Robin. He, I appreciate <laughs> your support on this. By, by the way, speaking of men, you know, <laughs> since he's in the news, of course, everywhere, Trump wanted to date Brooke Shields. Yeah, because oh, he said boy. the people will love it. <laughs> was yeah, like, yeah. Why? <laughs> Isn't that a weird thought process? It's like, People will love. What did he say? That you're uh, America's, America's sweetheart. sweetheart. I'm the world's and richest man. Where did he meet you? Did that he said that? I want to get back to Dean Cain. Well, but where did I met yeah. him many times at um, the, the, the Trump had? Uh, there was a charity where you cooked uh, something, and right. I I don't know. I made like spring rolls with something, and uh, I won a couple of times for like soup and whatever. It was a, ch a charity that they held at. Um, at one of his facilities, you know, his right. hotels. And uh, and so I just knew him and I knew Ivana and, you know, they were just always, you know, lovely to me. And then he, after Marla Maples, they broke up. He found me. I was on the set in like Kansas somewhere doing some shitty movie. And, and <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, that was where my career was. And, and he's like, you know, this is good for your career right now. And, and, uh, <laughs> like I, a business trend. Oh, yeah. Because like... I really think, I, I really thought this out. And I think it uh, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I was like, isn't oh. that a weird proposal? Like it's like a business transact. Like like if a guy is into a girl, you you kind of hang out with her, and you're like, hey, I just think you're cool, and it's that. It's like no, let me lay it on the line. Your your career needs a boost. I'm a billionaire. It's like it's like wow. And how do you respond? Like it's an awkward thing. Do you go? Gee, Donald, uh, nah, let's just be friends, or what do you well, do? Well, first of all, you know, the proposal part of it, you kind of have to scramble to think of how you're going to get out of it. And then when he said, <laughs> the people will love it, I was like, the people? The that's people. The people. And what I was people? like, these are your people. And, you know, and you're kind of like, that's weird. And I said, well, I, I, I so appreciate this. I really do. I, I got to say that, you know, thank you for your interest. <laughs> and I said, but I have a boyfriend, and I just don't think it would go over very well, by the way, which was a lie. 
if I right. didn't have a boyfriend at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's interesting. Like, like and then he's just like, well, okay, okay. I'll go. I'll go up. Uh, offer somebody else my. Kind friend, of like my... you made. You're making a mistake. It was the tone. Yeah. Like yeah. you know what? You you shouldn't. You should have known better. Uh, so you just a big fucked mistake. up everything. Just, yeah. You just had a missed opportunity. It could have been the <laughs> biggest thing if you just slept with them. <laughs> just, you know. I could have just slept with the, the Did you get a ton of that? Did you get so much of that that, like, when you review your life in your mind, do you sit there and go, if I told everyone, well, like, I've, I've read Liam Neeson, you dated this one. Okay, there's, there's some people that have come to the surface. But is there <laughs> an incredible list of stories of men who just wouldn't control themselves around you. I mean, I, they're like you know. princes, like Saudi Arabian princes and stuff. Which, which you know, at, there was one point when it was just Jordan and and princes, and then the you know Monaco, the, the royal family, and you know they were always trying to marry me off to like a prince and you know John John. What about be, John John? Uh, you and John Kennedy would have been perfect. Now. I was so. <laughs> it, I was so madly in love with him since the time I was like three. My mom, every my woman, aunt, every woman. Oh, my, I mean, was the in love was beautiful. You know, beautiful. Oh, yeah. I mean, God. And you know, my mom would say, "That's the boy you're going to marry. That's the boy you're going to marry." When I was like three, I was in PJ Clark's, and Mom Jackie O was sitting with Onassis, and and she had this little seat, and they had a high, they have a high chair for me at at PJ Clark's because when I was baptized, I was brought there and it's this long history. And, um, and I taught Jackie O how to hold sugar cubes in a stack. That's when they had those little sugar cubes that were wrapped in little, little squares. And I went over and I said, I'm going to marry John John. And she was like, Oh, sweetheart. And she just, she just looked at me like, you know, you know, you're crazy. Did mother you ever, put you this. Did you ever, as you were older, meet John John? I did. did. You, you did. Where I, did the meeting occur? Um, Aspen. We. I was Aspen. there for a wedding, and we, how old were you at that point? I was nine, twenty, nineteen, twenty-one or right. so. And I mean, I couldn't. Whose wedding was see it? See straight. Um, John Wildman. Whoa, I can't even. Remember. He was a, a triathlete guy like this really intense workout guy in LA yeah. and I was working for his company um and in and one of my other comeback attempts <laughs> to, I did something for health clubs um when you saw him were you like there's my fantasy I, there I, he is and I'm Brooke Shields and men don't say no to me I, no I, I it was not that I wish I was that confident I right. really wish I was that confident. Instead, I was like, "Sure, I'll I'll ski down a, those moguls and a black diamond." And never skied before in my life. Had to get right. had to get ski lifted out because I I went into his trees and I, I couldn't get up, couldn't get off the mountain. And he didn't right. help me. So, but I was like, "It's okay. He can't help me. He's he's John John." I was like, "Were you? We so so? In other words." You were kind of there. It would have been a moment where the two of you could have hit it off. Well, I, uh, so I, we, we did. We went out. I oh. was invited with the family. Um, he kept saying I looked like his mother, which was really interesting and a, a compliment, <laughs> you don't but it was that. also like, I don't know how to feel about this. And then we did have a real date, and I wouldn't sleep with him um, be, because I just, I kind of loved him too much. I didn't. I was like, no, this can't so be. So you meet at the ski resort. I wanted resort. to be his girlfriend. <laughs> I, I find this fascinating, Brooke, because my impression is that you could have had any man you wanted. Because I can't imagine that any man ever turned you down. Um, I not never only asked, were you smart. Though. I didn't ask. I didn't. I didn't. But oh, wait a second. John John. There John, he is. John John was different. <laughs> okay. So John John is on the. You're at the wedding. He says, let's go out on a date. You go out on a date. Where can he take you? You're two of the most famous people in the world. Well, first we go out to this bar pub with the rest of his family. And right. so, um, and Teddy was a friend of mine. Uh, it's such a sweet, sweet, the young, young, um, young Teddy. And, uh, and it, like everybody's just drinking at the bar and there's bar fights and drinking and and he's like you want to get out of here and i was like ah uh, yeah i do want to yeah. get out of here <laughs> <Don't get me. laughs> yes. and i was does he take you in his car to um, uh... we had to take cabs around everywhere because 
he didn't have a car there. And we went back to this like chalet hotel that he was in. Um, like, and he, he like kissed me and it was like the best kiss I've ever had in my life. And I was like, it was, it was not disappointing. Oh, beyond not disappointing. Just, he's just, the, the lips are beautiful and the face is amazing and the body and the person. And he's just, and he was down to earth and funny right. and irreverent. And like, I had met him once before um, touring colleges. He took me on a tour and, um, and then sent he took me you on a tour of Brown, didn't yes. he? Yes. Yes. I have a friend who remembers that because he knew he was telling me that. Well, and they named a sandwich after me and him. And it it was like, and he wrote me this note that said, you know, I I, I hear that that uh, that Ivy League, that other Ivy League got you and it's our loss. And it was really sort of sweet. So we were just friends like that. It wasn't until Aspen that sort of my dream came true. And then it was so precious to me. That I, I mean, you're in the room with him. You kiss him. It's the best kiss of your life. Oh, I, 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 I froze though because, you know what? I think I was actually still a virgin. I, th- I think I was. Wow. No, 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 no. That can't be. No, it had to be like 24. I, I, I mess right. my years up. I get dates. You never want me testifying right. for you. Me too. My, my, my dates are always all off, but. Um, I get lyrics wrong and songs and dates wrong. But, um, <laughs> Me too. Oh, God. Um, but I thought it was so precious to me. And I was like, oh, my God, you're falling in love. And if you sleep with him, he may not talk to you again and you can't handle that. Right. You were, you were smart. You did the kiss. And then he probably wanted to go right oh, to yeah. the sack. Absolutely. He's like, come on, let's go. And, and you're like, no, 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 we're moving a little fast. Yeah. And I thought I wasn't playing a game. I really was just, I was so afraid of being really hurt because if I slept with him, I would have given him my entire universe, my heart, my everything. And thank God you didn't because although it would be one hell of a story, you're right. Uh, you would, but, but so, so he never called you after that again? Um, he never said. Well, he, I had to get a cab home, <laughs> which, okay, now, which was a little less terrible. than chivalrous. In my he should have. He, he should have gotten in a car and made sure you got home. Already. Yeah, he didn't have to though. He had women falling at his feet, and he didn't have to do anything for it, you know. So, I saw him on the next day on the slope, and he didn't look at me, and he didn't talk to me. And on the one hand, I was like, shit. On the other hand, I was like, oh, thank God, thank God, because right. he still might not have talked to you. Even if you had, and you would have given something that he wouldn't have under like cared about, and you know, and he and he showed his two colors in that, and yes, then he did. we got stranded. We were all supposed to leave. We got snowed in, and he had to stay in my the house my mom was renting. So then it was my mom and John, John, and me in this <laughs> in this chalet in. And it was just like, this was surreal. Did he finally talk to you and say, he's angry at you because you didn't give him the prize. But everybody. He was never rejected, Howard. No, he he, was never. Well, that's right. That's right. And believe me, it was difficult to do. (laughs) I I, I bet. I I would have slept with him. I met him a couple of times. I was thinking about that. Maybe I could go for this guy. He seems kind of hot. But you're right. He was entitled. He was one of the best looking guys. He's a Kennedy. And he's like, well, what do you mean? Yeah. And I, I think I knew enough about myself by then. You know, again, I've been doing work on myself to say, you won't be able to handle this, Brooke. You're Can already you in too far. You are so together. The fact that you had your wherewithal to know to protect yourself. Because, yeah. you know, based on what happened to you in life. You were victimized a lot, and you were sexualized, and you were, and yet you were able to sort of keep your head about you. I, and, and, wow. I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, part of it is having to take care of my mom. Part of it is also in, with regards to the outside world, meaning like the press or, you know, pu- public opinion, and, and thank God there was no social media, but I was never protected by the people that you no. would think 
would would look after somebody. Adults betrayed you. There is no doubt. And that's what I got from the documentary. That's the big story. Mm -hmm. You did not have a soul in this planet, your father, your mother, really, truly looking out for your well-being. And that's a mind fuck. Not in its entirety. That was, there were um, I know. encapsulated the, 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 moments, but that was it. Understood. But you know, and I know yeah. deep down inside, it oh. is a mind fuck. Like, you know, here I was, this, okay, gorgeous <laughs> little girl. But not just gorgeous physically, but I was somebody good. Mm -hmm. I was a well-behaved child. I was polite. And you couldn't love me for me? You, you know, it was all transactional. But you got to make up doll after me and make money on me. And where the fuck is my father in this? And why didn't he step in? I mean, there's a lot of questions. And well, and, and he thought he was doing the right thing by completely not acknowledging that I even made movies. It was it was like I none of it existed. It did not exist in his world. So there was that was his way of protecting me. But I'm angry with him for that. He should have said, yeah, my daughter makes movies. These movies are sexualizing my daughter and I'm going to step in and I'm going to go to Terry and tell her to fuck off. And, and, and I'm her father. That's I mean, where you weren't protected. That's where I went, you know, and also I'm sure he was scared of my mom. Like, you know, yeah, well, she, she, she was a lot to handle. Well, she also said to him, you know, when they, when, well, after she divorced him without telling him, <laughs> which was <laughs> such a Terry move. Um, right. She, she was like, I don't want any alimony from you, but I want you to educate this kid. So there was something in, that was his purpose was to pay for my schooling. You know, that was, yeah. that was her, her way of, but also, you know, I just, the, the, the weird thing is when you see those old interviews is this little baby girl realizing nobody wants her opinion, but she has to stick up for her mom. And it's like, yeah. it's just, oh, it's heartbreaking, it's heartbreaking to watch and all the video but, of that is heartbreaking, doing it on TV and defending your mom. I mean, the documentary, I, I really, th this thing is on uh, Hulu. It's a, a two-part documentary called Pretty Baby. It's pretty fascinating is what it is. And the other smart thing is, and I don't think there's five people you could name in show business who would go to school at the height of their career and say, I'm going to Princeton. I mean, what a move. I mean, to have the sense when you're involved in Hollywood and all that excitement, I, I would go to Princeton. And I can't even imagine how weird that is. You're in a dormitory and your roommates and Brooke Shields walks in. Oh, and and they, they they paired me with, I mean, you know, with all respect, but like they paired me with like three pre med students, who like <laughs> one of them didn't even bring sheets, and oh. and they just brought like a caftan or some or, or a, I don't know what like a, one of those blankets just threw it on the bed. <laughs> and that was it, and and then another one was leaving peanut butter, sweetie, peanut butter M and M's, and then. And the peanut M&M's and she'd smear peanut butter on top of it and then just leave the knife on the refrigerator that I bought. Um, and I was like, this is surreal. These well, people you are not be, human. <laughs> you, well, you had to be like, Jesus Christ, I, I work on movie sets. I was in Blue Lagoon. <laughs> I, I mean. I well, mean, what was weird was they were starting to, because, you know, we had these communal, not communal showers, but you'd have a, a room that had all the showers in it. And, and. You know, you used to have to scream flushing when you flush the right. toilet because the scalding hot water would come in. And, you know, people were bribing, trying to bribe students to sneak pictures of me in the shower. Ugh. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. And you had to be. Did you did you have security with I did. you when you went? There? You I did. did. They looked You'd like students. To. So you didn't really know that they were around and they had an apartment. And and because, you know, you, the campus is all accessible you know you, you could find me i'd be um, afraid that someone would want to either kidnap you or mm -hmm. stalk you or or something like that it had and to there be were pictures nuts. of me from like the in in a grate like down below that they had gotten into some basement and sort of took these pictures um i was i was i don't know i met, met a guy or something like that and he was helping me with something and that was like oh she's dating in college and and then the students started really protecting me it was like this that's nice circle of hey 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 see that guy over there i don't he's in go to school here what's what's the deal do you want me to just so uh, when, let me walk you to school like so brooke when you started dating dean yeah uh, dean kane 
You must have been paranoid. Hey, I don't know if this guy really loves me or cares about me. How do I know that he's not one of these dudes who's going to no. sit there and release to the press that he's, you know, that he took Brooke Shields' virginity? Well, first of all, you know, that wasn't like, you know, like, didn't, he had like, that wasn't him. He was always, we had such a lovely, beautiful, like, courtship. And, I mean, the guy was the most patient human being on the planet. And I don't know how the hell he Why? did Why? Because you were like, hey, I have feelings for you, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I should uh, do this. I yeah. mean, you were honest with him. Yeah. I mean, I was, yeah, I mean, it was honest. And I was like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And it's just... And Worst just, case of blue balls in history, yeah. I would think. <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm I can't sure. imagine. I'd if apologize. I was a college student and Brooke Shields was into me, and uh, we were making out and we're doing some stuff, and then you put the... I'm like, oh, God. I'm going to I'm, I'm go nuts here. I know. No, no pun <laughs> yeah. intended. But, it, you know, he, he was in love. We were... It was... I mean, he was very patient and very sweet. And Why did it break up, Brooke? Um... We broke up once because I I had really only ever been with him in in every way, and I just thought, God, I can't this I, I like I can't get married, I right. you know, and so I better branch out. Then um, we got back. Wow, together. isn't that weird? Isn't that a weird thing? Yeah. Like like uh, oh, I, I can't be to with sow him. My I, oats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I did not sow. Um, <laughs> so, Was he heartbroken? Uh, very angry and very hurt. Um, yeah. And then we got back together again for another year. And then I just sort of grew. I was growing away from the older me. You know, I was really right. separating from my mom and really needing to separate from him because he was of a different era in, in my psyche, you know. And yeah. I needed... I needed um, to be challenged differently. To be and honest. you felt cool talking about it and mentioning his name, but that's my point. There's probably so many stories of guys and life and weirdos and people. I can't imagine the chaos that was going on around you. Well, and like, and the, I sort of shut myself down from it. Like I sort of mm -hmm. didn't acknowledge it. And and it's interesting the choices that I did make were kind of these weird sort of rebellious choices to try to just shake it up a little bit. And, and they, we, they were no longer the George, the, the John Kennedys. Do you know what I mean? They right. were, they, so it was interesting when I look back, I think, wow, that was an interesting, what were you looking for there? Oh man, they're telling me I got to wrap up. You got to oh. go somewhere. Where are you going? I, you know what? I'm so, so I hate this because I didn't, I didn't want to have to leave. I've got to go do the Today Show. <laughs> oh, the oh. Today Show's so boring. I mean, I uh, well, the, the, those, those yentas are going to drive you crazy. Yeah. It was yeah. so, man, we got to get into so much because oh. the documentary was so awesome. I loved it. I mean, there were, there were, there were things in there that, you know, geez, I, I, I mean, I have so many questions, you know. And, and, of course, the, the sexual assault that you reveal in the uh, documentary was very painful. And I understand why you didn't give the name of the person who sexually assaulted you. Mm -hmm. Because I know so many women who have been sexually assaulted, and they tell me the same thing. I never gave away the guy's name. And I always, as a man, go... You should give away his name because he's yeah. going to do this to other women. How could you not? Mm -hmm. But that's insensitive because there's also a fear or something. Like well, it, first of all, you you very rarely will be believed, even in today's right. society, especially then. Um, what ensues after that um, is legally uh, uh, very difficult publicly difficult financially difficult yeah. it's it's you rake you're raked over and then the victim shaming starts happening and i was in a place in my career where i couldn't afford it you know i was very very insecure and and sort of desperate and would you lay awake at night though and go oh is he is he doing this to someone else right now no. Like that would be the mind fuck, I think. No. You know what? Because I learned at a very, very early age that I am not, I don't have to be responsible for everybody else. 
you know, that the, right. their journey is their journey. And, and it, you know, it wasn't an option to call somebody out back in the day, you know. Right. And, I mean, I, I thought I might get a job, you know. So it was like that sort of desperate kind of weak place to come from. But also, um, he, he would have gotten so much attention. Was, were, you, were you considering in the documentary of actually naming him? Were you going to... I, I wasn't even considering in the beginning talking about it because right. it felt a little late and it felt... I was like, am I just jumping on a bandwagon here? Why now? Right. Why? And and truth be told, I wasn't able to speak about it until recently. You know, I'm in a different place in my career and my life. And and so there's I'm coming from a place of security. So that was that. I did not ever... I was never going to mention his name. He doesn't... Right deserve it um you know he knows who he is i wrote him a letter i, I i've seen him since then you have uh-huh do you, what, what what like do you go into a weird space yeah yeah i mean oh. such a weird space that my older daughter walked away once and said what the hell was that mom and i was like not the time, not the place and did then you tell did you tell her that's the guy who, I, who uh, raped me she guessed it she did. She wow. guessed it. And and that was shocking to me because I thought, oh, God, okay, here we go. You're a mother. You're a mother. Think, of, think about, think from the point of view of a mother first. And then I was able to sort of sit with her and, and describe it, you know, tell, tell her um, to the, you know, to the, she was able to handle it. Um, wow. My younger one was not privy and found out about all of it by watching the documentary and was very upset and very angry and left in the middle of the screening. Angry with you? Yeah, angry with me for not priming her and prepping her and angry at me for not telling her the truth and then really angry that her sister knew and she didn't, which is just the source of constant, you know. Right. The, the, you know, does she Being get, a parent does she get is it? hard. Does she get it? Just whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, and then it upset my husband too because i didn't protect my children in so far as this is what you're going to witness you're going to witness some stuff that's hard about your mother's life but it's important that we get this message honestly out there and i'm healthy and happy oh, yeah, yeah. for so, you i'm imagining those conversations oh they were not oh, good fuck i could never win <laughs> there's a million things to brook shields uh, let me just say this uh, this went too fast, but uh, they're telling me I better get you out of here. The Today Show, no one watches it. I don't I know. Why you leave. God, <laughs> I tried everything, and then I was like, I called Allie, and I was like, Allie, but we can't, I can't just give him 45 minutes. That's like, that feels rude. It just feels terrible, but... Uh, yeah. Well, just you, know I have many I'll more questions. <laughs> yes, please do. Please uh, Thank you, Robin. Brooke Shields. Pretty Baby, the two-part documentary out now on Hulu. And as uh, Brooke just said, Ali Wentworth and George Stephanopoulos produced this, which I had many questions about, but that'll have to be for another time. I think she's done. Um, I think she's with Gary in a little bit later, I think. Oh, is that I, right? I think so, Is yeah. that right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, well uh, you know, I love that woman. Oh, Allie God, Wentworth. I, you've I, got I really good taste. Beth, I don't think there's Ali. <laughs> yes, I don't think there's a better Robin. woman on the planet than Allie Wentworth, and uh, you were in good hands because they made a good documentary, and it's on Hulu. And uh, I couldn't have done for... it with anybody else. Yeah, I hear you, but uh, all right, I'll I'll stop questioning you. I'll let you go to that <laughs> stupid Today Show. <laughs> all right, Brooke. All right. And, and, I, I, and by the way, the next Broadway time Broadway work, I oh. will go see you all the time. And I think you have such great comedic timing. You are amazing. So. Oh, well, I wanted to talk <laughs> about Suddenly Susan. I mean, we well, didn't even get to that because that was one of my favorite shows. I love, and by the way, love that. I love that show. You were great. And, um, you know, uh, your whole thing with Bob Hope and learning comedy from Don Rickles. We got to talk about that. I want to understand what he taught you because you seem pretty polite. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, there, and oh, I've that's never a got, whole other show. <laughs> and I've never even gotten to speak to you directly about the whole Kathy Griffin thing who was uh, so close to you right. and the comedy. I mean, we got, we got a lot to hit. I know. There's a lot of ground to cover. 
lot of ground to cover. Shitsky. <laughs> Can you call the Today Show and say you're fuzzy? I, I, I don't no, try. You gotta go. But I got to go. Is it really? Maybe so. No. Is it really that important? <laughs> really? Here, they want eyeballs. Right. I don't know what to tell you. I got to I, I gotta you. put on that hat. I'll put on the Brooke All right. Shields I'll, I'll shut my mouth and then uh, have to wait till the next time you come back. All right. Brooke Shields, everybody. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Brooke. Thank you. Guys. Great seeing you. Nice. She was the joy on the payroll of the lover's man The spouse broken into when an M-up surrounded her I knew I heard you and I knew you heard me And we knew that spouse likely moves away As time moved on and down the road I met up with the girl that I once hoped the spouse Get me out of this nightmare My brain is numb and my gut spins fall Up and fall A shotgun red Up and fall A shotgun red All those other words I used to tell Him of that pain in his heart is getting We promise we'll never The end The end of man is getting me The end of man is driving soft Get me out of this nightmare My brain is numb and my Guts can stop A bone for a shotgun win A bone for a shotgun win Now Get me out of this nightmare My brain is numb and my gut spins spells A bone for a shotgun with A bone for a shotgun with She was the joy and peril of the lover's men Spells broken into an enemy mob surrounded her I knew I heard you and I knew you hurt Me And we knew that spells like we lose our way I met up with the girl that I once told you 